Hi folks. Um, well, today I just wanted to talk to you about um, this strange fact, in a way, that there, there, there are actually two Clan Frasers. Um, now, you know, Clan Fraser is a, is a very well-known Scottish clan. Uh, and many people around the world are aware of it, um, not least the, the, the millions of, you know, outland fans of um, the Outlander books and the, the television series. Um, but what many people uh, are unaware of, and this does uh, cause confusion, which is the reason really for this video, is that um, there are two separate clan Frasers with two separate um, clan chiefs um, and two separate clan lands. Uh, so there is Clan Fraser, which is the, the, the oldest and most senior part of what you might call the family, I suppose. Um, and then there's Clan Fraser of Lovett, the, the, which is uh, the junior member, albeit is, um, I think, about 600 years old, so it's not that young. So, how did this come about? How on earth did we get to the stage that we have two Clan Frasers? Um, so, to, uh, to, to, uh, to get to that answer, we're going to have to go back a bit. So if you can bear with me here, we're going to have to go into a little bit of detail here, but hopefully everything will uh, become clear to you. So anyway, let's go right back to the start. And it is thought that um, the, the Fraser's name, uh, the, the, the um, what you might, not the clan, but the, the name of it, was founded or was originated in France. Um, there's kind of different views here, possibly in Normandy, which you may know in the north part of France, or in Anjou, which is just south from Normandy, but it's not that far further south. So very, pretty, both parts pretty much in the same area of France. Um, and that's, that's where it's thought the Fraser uh, name and, and people originated from. And um, one of the thoughts on this is the French word for strawberry is fray, fraise. Um, and the French word for, so that's spelled F-A-F-R-A-I-S-E, so very similar to Fraser in a way. And strawberry plants are called fraisier, F-R-A-I-S-I-E-R-S. So both those, you could understand both those words, the strawberry uh, and the strawberry plants are very similar to, to, to the word Fraser, <coughs> Fraser's. And it is interesting that the arms of, of, of Clan Fraser, the original clan, the arms of Clan Fraser uh, show three um, silver strawberry flowers uh, on a blue, a field of blue. Um, and also the strawberry flowers appear um, on the clan crest. So I'll just show you the clan crest now. This is the uh, clan Fraser one. And then you'll see, I'll now show you the um, clan Fraser of Lovett one. So com two completely different um, clan crests. <coughs> however, let's get back to how how did the Frasers originate in Scotland? So to, to the, the first record uh, of a Fraser in Scotland is in um, 1160 uh, when uh, a, a Simon Fraser uh, who owned lands at uh, a, a small <coughs> village called Keith um, in East Lothian and he made a gift uh, of a church which he gifted to the monks at Kelso Abbey which is down the borders. Kels Abbey was a very famous abbey, a very powerful abbey. So this gentleman, Simon Fraser. Now I have to say to you now, this is going to be complex for all of us. The, the name Simon in Fraser for, the, for their clan chiefs is used throughout the centuries. So we're going to come up time and time against, I'm going to be saying Simon Fraser, Sir Simon Fraser. It can be confusing, but hang in there. We're going to get through this. Um, so anyway, this is, this is the first record of, of a Fraser in Scotland, Simon Fraser in 1160, um, and he was at this place called Keith, 
and he's slowly in. Now that's in just a small aside here, interestingly, that's very close to the little village that I was brought up in in, uh, in Scotland. Um, and it's East Lothian, if you want to go there, East Lothian is, is a very beautiful county and it's very near to Edinburgh. And in fact, if you were going to, there's a, a really good distillery there called Glen Kinchy Distillery, uh, which is at a village called Pencaitland. If you were going to <coughs> visit that distillery any time you were in Edinburgh, you could easily travel out to it. Um, you would be very close to Keith. I think there's not much of it now. There, I'm sure there's a house, a large house, and Keith Mains, I think, and things like that. But anyway, that's, you would be in that part, and you see it's a beautiful part uh, of Scotland. So that's the very first record. So we know from that there was a Simon Fraser and he, he had lands and he had money and he gifted his church to the monks <coughs> at Kelso Abbey. Um, so the Frasers then, then moved further afield, expanded, and they moved into an area of Scotland called Tweedale, Tweedale uh, which is around um, this lovely borders uh, town of Peebles. If you've never been there, you should really visit it. Peebles, lovely little town. Um, so they were there in the 12th and 13th centuries and they had a, a fortified um, tower house called Oliver Castle and then later on <coughs> they, they owned Needpath Castle. Now Oliver Castle I think is long gone unfortunately but Needpath Castle is still there and uh, you can certainly go there and um, it is often used for functions, events, weddings, things like that and you can visit it I think. Uh, anyway, you can certainly see it. If you were down in Peebles, you'd be able to see it. Um, and then the, the Fraser family, the Fraser clan, um, started to expand, and they expanded into uh, areas of Stirling, which is, you may know, up in the, the central belt, into Angus, which is over towards the east coast, and spread up further towards Inverness and Aberdeen. So we now have to just fast forward a little bit. <coughs> Uh, to the year 1296. Now I have to go into a little bit of detail here but it will all come clear why I'm doing this. So in 1296 uh, a gentleman called, wouldn't you know, Sir Simon Fraser. <laughs> um, now he was known, he, he's known in history as uh, Sir Simon Fraser the Patriot and I'll explain to you why he got that title. So he was captured by the English um, at, at this Battle of Dunbar. Dunbar is along the east coast um, from Edinburgh, uh, a coastal town. Um, and there was a, a, a fairly small battle there. It wasn't a huge battle. He was captured there along with about a hundred um, Scottish knights and people like that. And this battle was part of what's called the Scottish War of Independence which carried on and off for about 50 years, really, into the 1300s. Um, anyway, so Simon was taken prisoner. He was captured along with others. And he was taken prisoner and taken down to England. And he was forfeited of, of all his lands. However, he was subsequently released uh, on his agreement to serve King Edward I of England um, to serve in King Edward I's expedition uh, to Flanders in 1297. So King Edward I of England was obviously fighting also in Flanders. Flanders is a part of, of um, present-day Belgium, northern part of it, very historically famous part of, uh, of Belgium. Um, so Sir Simon accepted this and he was made, he was actually made a, a household knight um, for King Edward I and he served as a member of the royal bodyguard for the king. Um, subsequently he was gifted a horse by King Edward before the Battle of Falkirk in 1298 back in Scotland. So he'd come back from Flanders and King Edward was back up in Scotland uh, fighting the Scots. Now this is quite a famous battle because this is where um, the, the English heavily defeated the army of William Wallace at the Battle of Falkirk. So Sir Simon was um, 
a knight and he was fighting on the, at that time on the side of the English at that battle. Um, so subsequently uh, the next year in 1299 in recognition of his good service he was uh, given back all his lands and privileges and titles and he was made um, keeper of the Selkirk Forest which is quite a large area down in the borders and he subsequently participated in quite a famous siege at uh, Calaverock Castle uh, which is way down near Dumfries um, and he again participated there on the side of the English that was in the following year 1300 um, as an aside I think that siege is one that they have complete records for somebody for some reason kept complete records of and um, they, they know an awful lot about it and they often have reenactments at that castle Calaverock Castle it's a great place to visit if when things get better you're able to go there um, it's wonderful Carlaverock Castle anyway so Sir Simon um, was fighting there uh, on, on the side of the English however he uh, the following year 1301 Sir Simon decided to switch his allegiance uh, back to the Scottish side and he subsequently led uh, the Scottish forces to quite a well-known uh, victory over a force of, of English uh, soldiers at the Battle of Roslyn and that was uh, in a couple of years later in 1303. Uh, Roslyn is where Roslyn Chapel is, it's just outside Edinburgh, a very famous area so we have the chapel but there is also a castle which is still privately owned and um, I don't think you can visit it. Uh, but anyway th there was this quite famous battle there <clears throat> and uh, at this battle Sir Simon is reputed to have uh, slain this gentleman called Ralph Manton, Ralph Manton, who uh, was an English treasury clerk and uh, Sir Simon accused him of embezzling King Edward of England's funds and uh, not neglecting to pay Simon his wages when he was in uh, the English service. So obviously there's a little bit of a grudge there <laughs> against this man. <laughs> anyway, apparently he he killed him at the battle. Um, I just want to say at this at this point, and this so I'm just going to try and clarify a little issue for everybody here is because we're we're, we're talking here about I'm um, switching allegiances and things like that. During the, the medieval period, the the aspect of nations and countries and loyalties wasn't as defined as it subsequently became and is now. What was most important there was chivalry and knighthood and they would make allegiances and then change allegiances um, and so it, it, and to us it appears like they are almost traitors but it probably wouldn't have been seen in quite that same light at that time. These were all lords and nobles and in a way they were sort of, I'm not, I wouldn't use the phrase playing a game, that would be totally wrong, but you were involved in power and there was rules of chivalry. So often for instance after a battle all the knights would be uh, taken prisoner but they would be subsequently ransomed and they would be often looked after reasonably well during that time and then they'd be repatriated um, or as you saw there their lands would be forfeited and then they'd get their lands back it, it's a slightly different you have to have a slightly different view on history at this time during this period the medieval period it was all to do with knights and nobles and chivalry and the code that they work to um, so it's not maybe quite the same as we would see later on and certainly nowadays um, anyway, so following this defeat, King Edward I decides again, he wasn't actually at that battle, so he obviously decides he's going to get back up to Scotland, teach them a lesson. So he marched his army north and he took Stirling, I think, and Perth, and he marched on Dunfermline. And at that point, the main Scottish forces uh, surrendered and swore allegiance um, to him. But Sir Simon refused to do so and he joined forces with William Wallace, the great Scottish patriot. Um, 
However, the following year, uh, they had been defeated in a battle, had escaped, but then they subsequently, they were ambushed uh, by English forces um, and uh, Simon was um, captured, William Wallace escaped. So Simon uh, accepted the terms he was offered again by King Edward I and uh, in 1305 he was employed along with most of the other Scottish knights in hunting down um, his former comrade William Wallace. <coughs> However, let's go forward a year, and I'm sorry this is taking our time, but it's really important we understand this, this person, Sir Simon Fraser, the Patriot. A year later, uh, in 1306, Sir Simon once again broke faith with King Edward I of England and he defected this time to Robert the Bruce who you may have heard of in history who was uh, the man who subsequently well he became King of Scotland and um, won the famous Battle of Bannockburn however prior to this we're in 1306 um, uh, Robert the Bruce uh, and his army were defeated at a battle called the Battle of Methven and um, so Simon managed to escape from that but he was captured during that year, during the summer of that year uh, in, in 1306. He was captured near Stirling. So at this time, um, King Edward I had commanded that all captured supporters of King Robert the Bruce be executed. And in particular, he stated that um, Sir Simon's lands be harried and burnt, so in other words he would send his soldiers in and um, burn it and you know, damage the property and cause problems for the, the occupants. Um, so he obviously <coughs> felt quite strongly probably about Sir Simon's defection to King Robert the Bruce. So Simon so then was sent to London and there he was, as I'm afraid, cruelly executed in a manner that's called he was hanged, drawn and quartered. What this means was he, he, the, the prisoner is first hanged, but not until he's dead. So this isn't like hanging through a, a drop door where your neck is broken. This is just like kind of slow strangulation, but they, they pull them up, hang them until they're not dead. They bring them back down and they put them onto a, a, they're drawn which means they have ropes tied to their arms and their legs and these are pulled apart so their body is literally torn apart and then they're quartered, they're cut up into four pieces it's a brutal, brutal death um, his head was put on a spike on London Bridge next to William Wallace's William Wallace had also suffered um, that same fate. So that was Sir Simon Fraser, the Patriot, um, and that's that's the, the, the full history of him, just to give a, a flavour to you of it. But the reason I wanted to go into such great detail is, is because this, his death. So you could say if he hadn't defected to the Scots for the last time, he wouldn't have died. What happened was his death brought about. Um, the, the, the split of the clan because Sir Simon had I was going to say only two daughters I don't mean that in a derogatory sense he had two daughters so the clan chieftainship passed to his cousin who was fortunately not called Simon he was called Sir Andrew Fraser so at least we've got one that's slightly different um, so that was that really is, is what caused the split he, the chieftainship passes to his cousin Sir Andrew Fraser and who has a number of sons his eldest son I think he had five and I think two or three of them certainly were killed in battle but his eldest son was Sir Alexander Fraser um, and it is from Sir Alexander Fraser that the senior line of the clan, i.e. clan Fraser, descends. His other son was called Sir Simon Fraser, as you would guess, and it is from him 
that the Fraser of Lovett line descends. So we're talking here in the 13, well, he, it's, a, it's a Simon of Petrie executed in the 1306. We're talking here in the early 1300s. So we have uh, Sir Alexander Fraser in charge of what you might call the, the main clan Fraser. And then you have Sir Simon Fraser, <coughs> who subsequently um, becomes a fra Fraser of Lovett. So just give you a little history of them. Sir Alexander Fraser, in his own right, quite famous. He took part in the in the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, a very famous victory for the Scots, and uh, defeated the English and really led subsequently to to Scotland regaining um, its independence. Uh, two years later, two years after the battle, um, Sir Alexander married King Robert the Bruce's sister, Lady Mary. Uh, and he was then appointed Chamberlain of Scotland, which would, is and was a very, very senior position. So now we have the head of Clan Fraser at the peak of power in Scotland, right next to the king, married to his sister. Um, as a, just as an aside, it's interesting, uh, there was a famous letter sent to the, the Pope in 1320 called the Declaration of Arbroath, uh, which declares that Scotland is now independent again. It had been independent before, and it's now independent again. Um, and uh, Sir Alexander Fraser's seal appears on that letter. So it shows you how important this man was and how high up he had got um, within Scotland. So Sir Alexander, uh, he, he receives lands in Aberdeenshire, <coughs> In Carden, which is down near the Firth of Forth, and Forfar, which is uh, along the east coast. <coughs> um, and several uh, generations later, another Sir Alexander Fraser um, make, makes another, uh, what you might call, good marriage. Um, actually, just as there to let you know, this is a theme of both clan Frasers. They they gain their power and their lands largely through marriage, not really through conquest. Largely through marriage is how they become very powerful uh, and, and, and wealthy. Anyway, um, this Sir Alexander Fraser married the daughter of the Earl of Ross and he gained lands further north. Um, they were all brought into the clan. Um, in 1592, yet another Sir Alexander Fraser, so you can see on this part of the clan Fraser, they tended to move to the, the, the name Alexander. Uh, he created a town called Fraser's Borough, um, a planned town out of a small fishing village. And that town obviously exists today, it's called Fraserborough. It's just been thinking about it, it was originally two words, Fraser's Borough. It's over on the east coast, it's a fishing uh, port, town, very, quite important, um, Fraser Borough, so you could uh, visit there, um, and they had a castle there. And then subsequently in 1663, King Charles I um, appointed Sir Andrew Fraser as the first Lord Fraser, um, and it was Andrew Fraser who completed Castle Fraser, which is in Aberdeenshire, and that became the home of the Fraser family for more than 400 years. And this is something, this is certainly an area where people get confused. They'll say, well, why is Castle Fraser in Aberdeenshire when we thought the Clan Fraser lands were in Inverness? And this is why we are now, so the, the mainstream Clan Fraser, their stronghold was in Aberdeenshire. And that's where Castle Fraser is. Uh, it's a lovely castle. Um, and you can, it's in the care of the National Trust for Scotland. You can certainly visit it once everything's open. Uh, and certainly very worthwhile uh, visiting uh, a very large fortified Scottish um, baronial town uh, tower castle. So very good. So that became the seat and that's how it, we arrived at that situation. Um, and then subsequently due to another judicious marriage, um, Sir Alexander's grandson, again Sir Alexander Fraser, he became Lord Saltoon. So here we are, see this this side of the clan also getting another title, becoming Lord Sultan, and that is a title that they they still carry today. 
so the, the present clan chief of Clan Fraser, um, and I think her title says she is chief of the Fraser name. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, so the present clan chief is Marjorie Flora Fraser. She is the 20th Lady Sultan, and until she retired recently, she was a very active member of the of the houses of the House of Lords and the House of Parliaments. Um, so she sat there and was very active in the House of Lords <coughs> in the Parliament in London. Um, and her late husband was a great grandson of Queen Victoria. Her daughter Catherine Fraser, she, her title is Mistress of Sultoun, and she will accede to the, the clan chieftainship upon the, upon the death of the, the current clan chief. So that's the history of Clan Fraser, <coughs> what you might call, I don't want to use it, they are the original clan and the most senior part of the clan. That's, uh, I'll give you an example of that. We're now going to have a little look at um, Clan Fraser of Lovett and how it came about. So, on the, on the Fraser of Lovett side, um, Sir Simon Fraser, remember he was the, the, the brother of Alexander Fraser who became Chamberlain of Scotland, so his brother, he also had made a good marriage. So that was the point I was trying to make to you. I, th I think this is a, an area that they, you might say they're very good at. And as I said, rather than gain lands and power through conquest and fighting and bloodshed, they tended to do it through marriages. Anyways, so Sir Simon, <coughs> he married Lady Margaret Sinclair, who was the daughter of the Earl of Caithness. Um, and I think also maybe she was the heiress to that, I might be right in that. Um, so he gained lots of lands there, especially um, to the south and west of Inverness. Uh, and around Loch Ness um, and especially they were granted the lands of the Priory of Bewley um, and this is this became their main base so this is this is why um, uh, Clan Fraser of Lovett are based all around Bewley which is just outside Inverness is a lovely little place you definitely should try and go to Bewley if you can beautiful little place um, and the Priory, yes, is still there and you can see the Priory. So anyway, th it was through this marriage um, that Sir Simon was granted it. Um, and then in, a, in about um, 1460, they don't know the exact date, but around about 1460, um, Hugh Fraser, who was the, the sixth chief um, of, of uh, Fraser of Lovett, he became the first Lord Lovett. So you can see on one side of, of, the, of the, this, the, the clan Fraser, they, they became Lord Saltoon, and on this side they became Lord Lovett. They each established by, through marriages, lands. Um, the, the mainstream clan Fraser, much more over to the east, uh, Aberdeenshire, but also down in, in the borders and, and in the central belt, large lands. Um, Fraser of Lovett, tended to be around uh, Inverness, around Loch Ness, in that part of, of Scotland. Um, so the, 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 um, the clan chiefs of Clan Fraser of Lovett, uh, they have a, 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 just a, a Gaelic title as well. So in Gaelic, they're known as Mac Shimmy, and that means son of Simon. Um, so if you sometimes will, will hear them referred to as McShimmy, um, that just means son of Simon and it's a Gallic title for, for them. So th th there were a, a number of famous um, Clan Fraser of Lovett chiefs, um, not least the Old Fox, um, Simon Fraser, the 11th Lord Lovett. Um, he, in Outlander, he is uh, Jamie Fraser, who's the, the hero of Outlander, I think he was Jamie Fraser's grandfather. Or yep. Anyway, he was beheaded in the Tower of London. Uh, and also another very famous clan chief is uh, Simon Fraser, the fifteenth Lord Lovett, 
who was a highly decorated and hugely admired war hero um, in World War II. Now, rather than go into details here with them because they're, they're very big stories, I have already done separate videos on, on each of these um, Glenn Fraser of Lovett chiefs, and they're both on my YouTube channel. Um, so really, if you want to learn more about um, these two famous chiefs of, of Glenn uh, Fraser of Lovett, then watch those videos as well. They're very worthwhile watching, and they're on my YouTube channel, Gordon Scotland. Um, the current clan chief of, of Clan Fraser of Lovett is Simon Fraser. He's the 18th Lord Lovett and the 25th Makshime, or the 25th um, clan chief. Anyway, I hope I haven't confused you too much with this, but I felt it was quite important because often, as I said, often people would ask me about questions but because they'd be confused. For instance, there are, one confusion arises from uh, history books will tell you, and in my video about Culloden, I will tell you that Clan Fraser of Lovett did not participate in the battle. They were marching to the battle when news of the defeat came and they turned around. But yet, people will say to me, but Gordon, how is there a Clan Fraser marker on the battlefield? And that's because the Clan Fraser contingent who did take part in the um, the Battle of Culloden were from the original Clan Fraser. And in fact, their, uh, the Clan Chief's son was was killed at Culloden. Um, yeah, so that's why that's there. Also, as I said, the, the people get confused about Clan the Castle Fraser, thinking that why is it not beside Inverness or Loch Ness? Why is it way over near Aberdeen and in Aberdeenshire? And that's, that's because Clan Castle Fraser was for 400 years the head of, of, of the, the main um, Clan Fraser. Um, Clan Fraser of Lovett had their own castle uh, near Bewley, which uh, they no longer have, I'm afraid. So I hope that has uh, helped a little bit to, to resolve some of the problems that some people find in trying to work out uh, things about Clan Fraser. As I said, I have two videos about um, uh, Clan Chiefs of, of uh, Fraser of Lovett on my YouTube channel. You should really watch them. And also, there's a really good video on the on, also on my channel about um, when Fraser Highlanders became British Army soldiers, which is again very worth while watching if you're interested in in the Clan Fraser and what happened to him. Well, if, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, if you can give me a like, if you'd like to comment, that would be great. I, I try, uh, and I do read all the comments. I try and respond as, as quickly as I can. Sometimes I'm a bit busy and I can't do it, but I try my very best. But I do love reading your comments, so please feel free to comment. And um, until we meet again, I would just like to wish you all the very best from Scotland. <laughs>